Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Stevie with the first episode of the Mini Twine series. And in this uh, episode, I'm just going to be talking about all the different ways to iterate over shit really quickly because there's so many different ways to iterate over stuff in JavaScript. And frankly, it gets pretty confusing. And I think it's more important that you know when to use which tool than to know the tools themselves. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first example that I want to talk about is the dot for each. Um, I like to use dot for each when I'm trying to indicate a particular side effect in my function. Um, this is in direct contrast to map, which I like to use purely for pure functions. Um, and I contrast the two because both of them are kind of array native chainable methods. So you can have an array and then you can do dot and then call for each or call dot map. All right, so let's go into an example. So I just want to double an array, for example. Uh, so let's declare an array, one, two, three, four. And then let's change that. So it returns two, four, six, eight. So uh, I'm gonna say dot for each, and then accept uh, a callback that accepts the element, the index that it's at, and then the array that it's operating on itself. Now, if you don't know what that does, or that the callback accepts these three arguments, I highly recommend that you just memorize that because most of the array native iteration methods or most of the array methods themselves just kind of um, accept these three arguments as their callback arguments. Okay, so how do I do this? So I'm gonna mutate the array that's outside um, and then I'm gonna take the index that it's at and then I'm gonna double that. Uh, cool, and then I can return that array. So in this example, I am mutating the array that I'm iterating upon. Um, when you have a, it, this is in contrast to a pure function where you return a whole new array. Um, if you want another example of this kind of uh, contrast between pure and a, a function that uh, mutates upon itself, uh, I would definitely check out slice versus splice. Those are both native methods and you can definitely learn about them really quickly as an extra example. Okay, what about map? Like I said before, I like to use map for functions that I, that are pure. So if I wrote the exact same function, the way I would write it is um, I would return directly the map of the array, same arguments like I had said, and then I'm just going to return double that. And as you can see here, I don't mutate the array that's passed in because that's just not a, a pure way to go about doing this. Um, and I have to return the output of the map because um, map will not uh, return the array that it iterated upon, but rather it'll return a brand new array in very functional, pure style. Um, so let's go ahead at this point and just check that both of, both of these things are working. Okay, so if I wrote node iter.js, cool. I have 2468 at the top, 2468 at the bottom. So you can see that both of them are working. So the next example that I want to talk about is for in. Now this is kind of different. It's not an array. Well, you can iterate over arrays and I've seen people do that. So I want to distinguish that you probably should not be doing that. For in semantically works really well when you're trying to iterate over an object. Um, and when I say semantically, I mean, it's just well understood that that's how you typically want to iterate over things that are, object, that are objects or object like maybe dictionaries in Python or so on. So let's define an object, var object equals. Um, and as a side note, you can iterate um, through an array using for in, but typically I like to uh, stay away from that because it seems more to me like a, like a mistake of the language than something that should be utilized really well. Um, okay, so let's iterate over it. I like for let key in object and then uh, as a, I want to check that it's only going to iterate over the um, the immediate properties as opposed to the properties on its prototypes. And then, um, cool. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, this is just um, checking that the key that I'm that I'm iterating upon inside the object is owned by the object itself and not uh, the prototype chain, the answers and ancestors in the prototype chain. So you definitely want to know that you want to use object that has own property when you're iterating over an object using a for in loop. 
Okay, and um, another note is that I like to use let within my for loops because it seems very semantically correct. It's like, hey, I'm going to declare this variable within this block scope and it's going to disappear after this block scope. And it makes a lot of sense to use something like let as opposed to const, which wouldn't really work in this example, or var. So let semantically makes a lot of sense. Now I know I haven't been using the semantically right variable declarations above, but this is just kind of to demonstrate a point. Okay, so if this works properly, we should be expecting uh, just one, two, three, four. So let's do that. Uh, perfect. Okay, and so the next example is just the general kind of purpose for loop. I like to use the general purpose for loop as kind of like a um, like a, a way to communicate something that's pretty obvious. It's just a way to iterate over stuff because most languages have the for loop in it. This is kind of my opi own opinion. The other ones I can say that you should generally be following those rules, but with the for loop, I like to use it just because it's easy to understand from people that are not coming from this language. In addition, I like to use it for iterations where th when you're iterating over something and you know the number of iterations that's going to happen ahead of time. So let me go ahead and show you an example. So if I have, uh, let's declare another array, one, two, three, four, um, and you wanna iterate over that. So you can do for let um, i equals zero, i is less than array.length, i plus plus. So in something like this, we have array.length and you know that you're going to iterate the number of times in the length. Um, and I actually think it might be better to have the length declared outside, like array.length outside here, and then um, just iterating, uh, pre-computing the number of iterations that happen. So I like to use the for loop as a sort of general purpose way, and also when I know or have pre-computed the length. Um, for all of you kind of like competitive programmers out there or want to optimize every single cycle, you already know that sometimes this may uh, optimize your for loop. Um, nowadays it might not be so much because uh, the compilers have gotten to a point where they can detect that uh, you d that it'll just cache if you um, array.length. It won't recompute array.length every single time you're trying to iterate over. Cool. So I can do console.log um, array, array i, and then let's multiply that by two. And then let's run that node 2468. Great, so the last example that I wanna go over is the for of loop. Now this is the newcomer in the block. Um, this is, and I, w I don't really know the ground rules for this, so I would say definitely use this for um, what is, it kind of came into the language for, which is iterators and um, generators. So I'm just gonna go right into an example because frankly, I might not know enough about it and uh, don't wanna make any mistakes. So I'm declaring an iterable and the way I'm going to get an iterator out of um, my iter iterable is by declaring a generator function. I use the function star syntax and then I yield one yield two yield three and so at each one of these yield points it's going to stop execution and then give me that value um, and then until I make it go on to the next value and interestingly enough you can iterate over iterators so you can um, take an iterator and put it into a for of loop and that will automatically call a dot next on it if you don't uh, are not familiar with iterators uh, I, ha I highly recommend that uh, you check out uh, some of these other videos that I'm going to post down in the bottom. And hopefully I'll be able to, in some other time, put out an official twine on that. Um, for value of my iterable, I'm going to console.log that value times two. And hopefully that should work as well. Okay. And there we go. So this was just a couple of different ways to iterate over stuff in JavaScript. So just to quickly go over through, um, for of is used for um, uh, you know going through iterators. For is kind of like a general purpose. I like it when you already know the number of iterations that's gonna happen. For in for objects, because it makes sense semantically. And it's uh, dot for each I like to use to indicate uh, a side effect and dot map for pure functions. 
All right, so I hope that was helpful. This is my first mini twine. So let me know if this was helpful. Peace.